Chapter seven, your asymmetric risk vehicle, triple digit ROI. The higher the upside, the less the downside risk. This is not day trading. This is a logical commitment to adhering to a strict philosophy that requires research and patience. In other words, this is allocating a percentage of your reserve vehicle to invest in moonshots. Definition time, moonshot. Noun, an ambitious exploratory project that possesses little expectation of short-term profitability. In the long-term, however, five to 10 years, there is a clear expectation of at least a 10,000% ROI because the company increases 100 times in value. If you know how to harness moonshots, then asymmetric risk can generate triple digit and higher ROIs. However, I need to make an important distinction. This is not a pick one horse and bet the farm strategy. That's foolish and that's what gamblers do. The majority of your picks won't be 10,000% ROI moonshots and that's okay. The key is to take your total investment and to spread it out. And I'm gonna share more on that in just a minute. If you think it's impossible to find companies with such potential, I'd like to ask you to think bigger. You also need to break out from that tiny box your conventional financial planner stuck you into years ago. He put you in there with these vehicles that make him the most money and frankly are going to leave you disappointed. Once you step outside that box, however, you will realize that there is a more intelligent and faster way. The asymmetric risk investing system. Investing in companies in emerging industries is what the world's richest men and women do every day. It's not a theory, it's not an idea, it's a standard practice for the wealthy. Make no mistake, these are the steps the wealthy take. These are the rules the rich live by and how they craft their legacies. To put this asymmetric risk into action, here's what Ray Dalio would tell you to do. It's a system that involves five phases. Number one, do your research. I'm amazed by interviews with former CIA operatives and spies when they talk about being able to walk into any situation and know within moments where the exits are, how many people are in the room, and approximate ages and heights, who looks suspicious, and more. Being an adherent to an asymmetric risk philosophy requires you to become an enthusiastic, intelligent, and keen observer. Moonshots don't just appear. You have to know where to look for them. You need to see not where things are now, but where things are going. I'm talking about finding future-focused startups and emerging industries in their relative infancy today that will dominate the world tomorrow. The question then becomes, who will the most influential disruptors be within the next decade? Disruption is a buzzword and for good reason. It's the key to finding high ROI investments. Think about the disruption Uber created in the world of transportation. Taxis have been on the streets since the 1880s and yet since 2017, without owning a single vehicle, Uber gives more rides a day than all the taxi services combined. Without owning a single piece of real estate, Airbnb rules the hospitality industry. Without owning a single physical movie, Netflix rules the film industry. Look to the industries that are changing life itself and the way we live it. For example, here are some things to consider. Tesla has paved the way for electric vehicles to become the standard, but beyond Tesla, who else is in the running to become a household name? Think about this. Who will win the contract once the government decides to make all government-issued vehicles electric? Answer this. What happens when we replace semi-trucks with electric semis that drive themselves? Who will be responsible for making this happen? Who are the up-and-coming players in cryptocurrency? And what will they do to the way that we buy and sell everything? Who's responsible for bringing 5G to the world and what companies are developing 6G? It's coming sooner than you think. Within a few years, we'll be able to download an entire movie in seconds. You need to find out who's gonna be responsible for that. AI is changing the world from manufacturing to the tech industry and beyond. Who are the most exciting AI players and what are they doing today to generate five digit ROIs within a decade? 
the medical field is being transformed through rapidly emerging areas like augmented reality for operating rooms, telehealth, biotech, genetic engineering, which companies are starting to stand out as disruptors in these spaces. The most intelligent stock market investments aren't going to be in your face. They aren't the ones offered at your neighborhood investment firm. They're not making headlines all day long. Companies with prominent visionaries at the helm are already in the spotlight. And the thing about the spotlight is that everybody else can see it too. Avoid companies with well-established high book value, stable cash flow, and high current share price. In contrast, the most significant indicators of high and promising upside potential is anticipated or projected earnings. Now listen, I'm not asking you to become a fortune teller and you don't need magical skills to see into the future. There are plenty of tangible signs of future success of those who know what to look for. Look to the future and you'll do this by leveraging emerging market research firms that know who tomorrow's star players will be, what kind of earnings you can reasonably expect, when can you expect moonshots to start producing these returns, where these players will emerge, why the risk is more than worth the reward. That's how it's done. All right, I've got an action step for you, which means put the book down and go do this. I recommend that you align with research services that study future niches and share their findings every year. I spend thousands of dollars on research services and then I turn their advice into significant returns. You can research yourself or you can leverage the knowledge, insight, and analysis of others. Leverage rocks. Number two, pick wisely. After aligning yourself with research firms who are constantly searching for moonshots, pick 15 of the most explosive under the radar companies showing a 10,000% potential ROI. This means if projections are correct, these investments will grow 100 times in value during your ownership. Because you can invest in thousands of companies, thanks to the ease and accessibility of online trading, there are plenty of opportunities to discover investments that have the combination you want. Limited downside with tremendous upside potential. Pick your projected winners and spread your allocated investment out evenly among all 15 of them. If you spread your investment equally among all 15 opportunities, each with 10,000% ROI potential, and 12 of your 15 fail, but three succeed, here's how the math is going to break down. You've got 15 investments, and let's say you put $1,000 down on each of them. So you needed a total of $15,000 to put this investment out there, and let's just say that this occurs over a five-year time frame. Here's the result if 12 investments fail and three investments win. The three winners each have 10,000% ROI or they went up 100 times in value. And here's what it means. The first investment that you put 1,000 in on is now worth 100,000. The second one and the third one, it's the same. You put 1,000 on each, you got 100,000 growth out of each of them. And what it means is after a total of five years, 100,000 on each of the three is a total of $300,000. You put $15,000 in and got $300,000 out. Pretty good. Here's how you calculate the ROI. Remember that you take your total earnings, $300,000, you're gonna divide it by your total investment, $15,000, and 300,000 divided by 15,000 is 20. Now multiply it by 100, and that is a 2,000% total ROI. Now we gotta figure out what your annual ROI is. So take your 2,000% total ROI and divide it by five years. And that equals 400% yearly ROI. That's an exciting triple digit ROI. Now, it's never this simple, right? I mean, in real life, most failed picks don't go to zero and not every winner increases 100 times in value. However, you can still reasonably expect mid three digit returns by following this strategy. You need 15 companies that research confirms to have a strong likelihood of being a winner in the future. Remember when investing $1,000 in Netflix would have made you over $230,000? Why not look for more opportunities like that? 
This is not speculation. I've been applying this strategy and owning a piece of the most exciting and fastest growing companies for over a decade. Number three, DIY with your selection. And DIY, of course, stands for do it yourself. Purchase an equal piece of all 15 companies through a simple online trading platform. Many of them are commission free rather than a financial planner, right? Financial planners are greatly incentivized to push only a handful of products. Those are typically the only ones they'll ever share with you. You also have to pay a financial planner, but you skip that unnecessary fee if you just do it yourself. So purchase your share in 15 companies and manage them yourself. This is a passive investment but doing it yourself is an important reminder that all other experts, tools, and advice are secondary to you being in charge and not the other way around. Remember, becoming a self-made millionaire is your responsibility. And while I do believe in delegating everything I don't wanna do, which is quite a bit, there are some things you simply can't outsource, and this is definitely one of them. You also need the discipline to divide your money evenly into at least 15 opportunities. No matter how excited you get about a particular company, never favor one over the others. You're not trying to pick the triple crown winner. This isn't hunch work, it's a system that delivers triple digit ROIs, but only when used correctly. Number four, commit to the plan. Commit to holding your carefully chosen picks for five to 10 years, focusing on long-term growth before selling. If you've done your research correctly and allocated your funds equally, this is less risky than it seems. Besides, you're banking on these businesses becoming trailblazers in emerging markets and not overnight fleeting successes. This type of success takes time. Now, because this is a long-term play, you should only invest money you can afford to lose because I promise you will, but losing is a part of the winning strategy. I admit that this philosophy requires you to mix two different qualities that do not seem to go together, boldness and patience. These two virtues can be like oil and water, and I totally get it. One always seems to be at war with the other, Removing the emotion, however, associated with stock market fluctuations helps a lot in this arena, hence the reason for step five. Step five, rebalance annually. Every year, not every day, week, or month, rebalance your portfolio and ask whether there's one or two that you should be adding or selling. We all know people who have the stock app pulled up on their phones constantly, right? Nervously watching every dip and gain day in and day out. This is not a habit that you want or need. You shouldn't be looking at the market every day. Keep the long game in mind with this strategy. Don't allow the market to control your feelings. Many years ago, I dabbled in day trading. I was an absolute train wreck every day when I lost money and was overjoyed when I won. This type of emotion has no place in asymmetric risk investing. These days, I'm the kind of investor motivated by stock dips. I already know that at least some of my picks will be massive winners, more than enough to offset my losses. So instead of panic selling, I buy more. See, I told you this was counterintuitive. Key strategy takeaways. What should you take from this? First, I hope this inspires you to become even more of an excellent saver. Putting the maximum number of dollars into your reserve vehicle should be priority number one. The reason is that once you do this research, you need to be able to act on opportunities as quickly as possible. You also wanna get in on the moonshot while they're still affordable. There is no minimum requirement to getting started in either real estate or the stock market. That's the beauty of both. Do it right, and the minimums you need to play the game are low. Find the right real estate deal and in the right market and your initial investment can be minimal. The same is true of the stock market. Get into the game with minimal investments but still experience high ROIs. It's the best of both worlds and it's why we focus on the percentages rather than the static piles of money as our goals. Listen, I do have a few words of caution as you prepare to gas up your race car and take asymmetric risk for a spin. Number one, allocate evenly. 
if you're putting all your eggs in one basket or two, you're doing it wrong. My minimum number of investments is 15 companies. Number two, invest in research. This strategy is useless without intelligent analysis. Do not rely on hunches from Cousin Billy's recommendation based on the hot tips that he got from Todd, his accountant. Find experts and leverage their knowledge and experience. Number three, quit obsessing. This strategy does not require any daily consideration. So do not be that obsessive person at the party who spends their time in the bathroom checking their stocks. Commit to an annual rebalance and know that dips happen, like it's a part of the game. And when the market dips, that's when I double down. You're playing the long game, not investing in get rich quick schemes. Number four, check your emotions. The moment this becomes emotional, you should get out of the game. You're winning by losing most of the time, remember? So if that thought gives you hives, this may not be the right strategy for you. And finally, number five, never chase the market. If you're buying only because a stock is in an upward tear, you're reacting to the market. This is a terrifying habit that will lead to major problems over time. Sure, you can experience a few wins this way, but in the long run, it will slaughter your portfolio. Stick to the system. So if you've ever wondered how some of the rich become so rich, here's what you need to remember. Number one, do your research. Number two, pick wisely. Number three, do it yourself after you've made your selection. Number four, commit to the plan. And number five, rebalance annually. I regularly interact with my mentors and online investing groups, and I have multiple financial subscriptions that keep me well-informed. I also leverage connections to allow me to find the next great opportunity. I'm always researching emerging markets and identify moonshots. If you'd like free information about my own portfolio or where I go for research or who helps me stay ahead of the game, or if you want to see more of my passive trading strategies that earn me these solid triple digit annual returns, go to chriscrone.com forward slash stocks. Listen, you could put this book down right now and be set for life once you fuel up these first three vehicles in your fleet. But if you're anything like me, you want to go faster. And if that's so, proceed to the next chapter. I will show you an even higher ROI gained when financially successful people leverage business to produce incredible, dare I say, blockbuster level returns. And we are at the end of chapter seven and I've got our chapter seven checkpoints right here. Number one, risk is inherent in anything with a reward and the stock market is no exception. That's why if you want better results than traditional investments, you have to become a studier of emerging markets and you've got to commit to risk. Number two, the traditional form of investing is symmetric. The potential gains and losses are equal in value. It doesn't utilize the real upside of risk. And so it's lackluster and inefficient. Takeaway number three, on the other hand, Positive asymmetric risk means you're selecting investments with an extraordinarily high upside and yet low downside. It's a way to leverage both risk and return. Number four, the five-step plan for utilizing risk includes leveraging research to identify at least 15 moonshots with uncommon upside with returns up to 10,000%. Number five, after doing your research, DIY purchase stocks in a minimum of 15 companies that you believe will have at least a 10,000% ROI. And finally, number six, be prepared to hold these stocks for at least five years before liquidating and commit to a yearly reevaluation rather than obsessing over periodic fluctuations in the market. And I quote, if you're trying to create a company, it's like baking a cake. You have to have all the ingredients in the right proportion. Elon Musk. <laughs>